all here because we're Italian. We're all here because we were part of something bigger than us because we wanted to be. Now stand up and take the hit. Regardless that, and I'm going to be honest with you, they didn't find a single thing. I, I, maybe I can think, think of 30 guys within the Gambino family. They didn't find a, a nickel bag a $5 bill out of place, nothing. It was not a single piece of evidence. It was all grand jury testimony, why attached, and conspiracy. You know? And, I mean, if you add everything up, they wanted to give me 100 years. Jeez. If you ask the probation report, he said I should have went to jail for 1,000 years, he told the judge. You know, that's just, that is the great part of the federal system. It's the only great part of the federal system. They got no programs in jail to get you home early. There's no such thing as getting you home. You sit around, you do your time, you come home, if you're lucky. Because they, they give out football. Forget about football numbers. They're giving out zip codes now. Yeah. When I was coming up, they were giving out football numbers. Today, they give out zip codes. So, I mean, if you get lucky, you come home. There's no getting your degree. There's no trailer visits. You know what I mean? You're behind yeah. a plate glass window until you get into a low after you got 10 years of good behavior. And that's that. It's not like the state where I'm working seven jobs, programs, getting trailers every 12, eight, eight to 12 weeks, whatever it is, mm -hmm. seeing your family, touching, kissing, taking photos. Hey, they, 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 that ain't going on. Damn. That's it. They, they're hitting you with that sledgehammer and lights out. And I learned my lesson. I mean, I was already at it again for six years. I was bookmaking on the side, making a little money, going back to work, trying to get my union thing going. And they come and disrupted the whole thing. And it's like, this is about rehabilitation. Like, you guys already cured me six years ago. I'm good. You know, it ain't about rehabilitation because they would have left me alone. They said, oh, you know what? Hootie's doing right. Living with his family, working. I have a little bookmaker on the side. Lawyers are bookmaking on the side. You know what I mean? It's legal now in New York City. But that was it. They, they, they don't believe in rehabilitation. They would have left me alone if they did. Because if you learned your lesson and you're doing the right thing now, what are you coming for me now? And you're not coming for me because... You caught me doing a crime. You're coming for me because three, four more people went to the grand jury and said I was this big Gambino character. You know what I mean? Come on. That's what it is. Ham sandwich gets you indicted. It's bullshit. And then, many, then you're looking at you're looking at 4,000 years. How many years did they give you? I wound up getting time served, which was like five years at the time. I did Damn. like, what, three and a half on it, came home, uh, probation. But I, what I did, you know, they considered no good. And I, I could care less. I was out of the life. I never spoke on my friends. I never went in. No one ever asked me a question on one guy. On, I was never asked one thing about one guy on my case. Not one thing. A U.S. attorney's never walked in and said, an FBI agent never walked in and said, what, did so-and-so ever, did so I've never. They never even came. They came, they got me because I decided to jump off a plea. See, they started these things called global pleas. So what happens is they take 100 years mm -hmm. and they say, you three guys, whack up that 100 years, however you need to whack it up. You three guys, whack up 60 years. You five guys, whack up 200 years. But they do it in months. It's pretty funny, too, because I remember I heard a guy walk in and go, yo, they only offered me 120 months. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, buddy, that's 10 years, my friend. He went, yeah. what? Oh, wait a second. Let me do that math again. A lot of guys, they come back thinking like they got a great, uh, they, yo, my lawyer told me they offered 120 months. You know what, off, yo, 240 months? I could do 240 months. I'm like, oh, you could do 20 years on a conspiracy that you didn't even get caught. What, 20 years? What do you mean 20? Yeah, that's what 240 months is, my friend. Count it up. Like, a lot of these guys don't even realize that. You they know? make it sound it's like everything. it's a lot less. Right. You the know, months. they're like, oh, 60 months? No. I got that on my head. What do you mean? That's five years. Five years? Oh, wow. Five years, wait. Oh, can I count off? Like, people, just, they don't get it, you know? Yeah. And I'm in there like, listen, you guys don't realize they're putting our lights out. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm watching everything that's going on, and I'm like, yeah, there's no evidence. There's nothing that we've done. They got nothing on us. Everything was from things that we did prior. So I'm like, if they're looking to get us for shit that we did years ago, because there's nothing going on today. At all. You know, my whole crew was good, well off, had everything established money, houses, money put away. They were good. So the only thing they could get them on is whatever they think they did in the past. And I'm like, listen, if that's what they're looking to do to us, because we were like the longest running crew without, you know, a big pinch, without a guy going bad. Like we, we had a great reputation with 
you know, the crew that I came up with, like a hundred years within that crew. Yeah. It was dynamite, solid. And uh I'm like, they're looking to put us underneath the jail. Have you guys not realized that yet? Like I was in a, you know, a co defendant meeting one day and I'm looking around and you want to talk about a superstar team? I don't care where you are in the country. I don't care how many high power attorneys you think there were. That room was a billion dollar room. The attorneys that were in this room were the most powerful defense attorneys in the world. And I'm looking around going, we're in trouble. Like, you got a boss, a boss, an underboss, a consigliere, captain, captain, captain. Like, there was nothing less than a than a captain on this case. Like, you know, and, 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 like with stripes. I mean, and even high-powered made guys. Like, not just because there was there's made guys I would walk past and, like, you know, I guess, and get out of the way, you know. But then there's made guys where they got crews and money and you, and you got respect for them. And these are the guys that I'm sitting in a room with. And it's like, yo, this is crazy. Like, this is, this is life. You know what I'm saying? Like, people think life imitates art. This is art. Art will be imitating this in 20 years. You know what I mean? Like, this is what it is right here. Yeah, you look, watch The Godfather. You watch Goodfellas. They'll probably the make a movie right for that. Here. Yeah, listen to me. They it was probably the first offer was probably about between every guy in that room was 10,000 years <laughs> with no life. You had up all the years, but they wanted to give everybody in that room. It was probably about 10,000 years, you know? And mm-hmm. I remember I'm sitting around and we're all deciding on council. And then you, they decide on who's going to be the head guy. Cause they want us all at the arraignment. They're not letting us go separately. So then we're all sitting around and I'm sitting around and, and now they come to me and it's like, well, I'm like little old me, little old Hootie's the guy now. I was the drug dealer. You're the guy they're looking for. All the government does it. You're the only guy that had a fight career criminal as a boss. Like I said, all it's up excellent. I'm the only guy fighting career criminal. You know, it's like, and then all the lawyers, are look, all their lawyers are looking at me. Like, listen, how are you pleading this out? Like, oh, what do you mean? Oh, they were offering 10,000 years. I'll take 9,000. The other 19 guys will whack up 1,000. Like, what are you even talking about? I go to work every day now. So it was the craziest, craziest situation I was ever put in. So I decided, I watched the way things were going. I was watching me, guys, captains, cry in cells and and, and, and want to blame other people. And it's like, like you took that oath. Like I, I'm, I'm, I want to hold that down. Like, and I know, guys, like I was at outside ceremonies. I know, I know the saints that burnt in guys' hands. You know, I'm looking at guys going, man, Padre Pio is pissed at you right now. You know, like, San Padre Pio is like, man, he's pissed right now because, like, what are you doing? You took that, like, this is the life you wanted, and you in there talking about having an anxiety attack. So, like, just the craziest shit. Or, or you're talking about, let's blame this guy. And it's like, bro, they know that you're the captain. You can't blame an associate, bro. They know. They know everything. Yeah. You can't blame it all. Like, man, you're, you're just in here dry snitching anyway. And it was just blowing my mind. And I was like, you know what? I'm getting off this global plea. They consider that being a rat. I threw myself on the mercy of the judge. You go in front of the judge. That's the good part of the federal court. That's what I'm getting back to now. In federal system, that they can recommend, the AUSA can recommend whatever they want. The judge is going to look at it and look at your status and your letters and your people and what you've done in your life. And he's going to decide what he's going to give you. In the state, your lawyer and the and the, the you know the assistant district attorney they make a deal. You go in front of the judge and say, "The judge asks you, you happy with with the district attorney's offer? Yes. Did anybody force you to take this offer? No. District attorney, what's the offer? Five years. Okay, five years. Bang, over. It's not like that. Now the judge looks at it, and I took a deal where I'm going to go in front of the judge and I'm going to confess to every crime that I ever did. Mm-hmm. Because they had shit all twisted, how it was. And they could, you know, to this day, they could still think that, you know, my money that I made in drugs years and years ago was part of the Gambino family. Never was. None of my crimes were. I was part of the Gambino family because I wanted to be. I went in a gangster. I went in a drug dealer. I went in a tough, like, I went in with all of those things. I didn't get them in there. You know what I mean? And I went into, and I sat in front of the judge, and I had a compassionate judge. There's two things this judge was he didn't like organized crime and he didn't like bullies so if you were passionate and you were and you were sympathetic and you were sorry he wasn't going to let the, the, the u.s government bully you Damn. but if you were organized crime and you were standing there like you didn't do anything wrong and you didn't belong there 
he was going to give you 100 years, you know. So I went in and I confessed to everything I ever did, you know. Brett Baja, you know, the, you know that that guy was that guy was no good. I don't, I'm first on your show. That guy was no good. He was the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District, and he hated. It. He was racist against Italians. He made me eat my whole indictment, hoping the judge was going to throw a thousand years at me because I beat career criminal. He just wanted every Italian locked up and put away. And he comes from a Muslim background, and that's the one Trump fired. And uh, not to get into politics or anything like that, but. We got to watch what we put in place. And criminal, you know, I, I'm not a guy that gets into politics, but I know like Obama, like praised this guy and put him there. And this guy hated Italians, like racist against Italians. Like you couldn't believe, like he made me eat, eat an indictment that was insane. The charges that I had to take. Like if you would have added those charges up and it was up to the U.S. attorney, you know, like my grandkids parole officer hasn't been born yet. Like, that's how many years they wanted to give me, you know? And I just, I threw myself in front, of, in front of the judge, and I told him everything I did. Nobody asked me about anything that anybody else did. Right. No one ever came to my jail cell. No one ever came to a jail and sat down with me and said, yo, did your boy do this? What did your boy do that? Hootie. Hootie, 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 hootie. That was it. Hootie, were you involved in this? Hootie, did you do this? Hootie, were you on this? Hootie, where you on this? Yeah, all of that went down. But that was it. None of the guys I grew up with, none of the guys in my group, none of their names were even mentioned to me. And I threw myself on the mercy of the judge, went back to a jail, sat there for a year or two, went back. You know, they, they, they throw a probation report together. The judge reads that. The judge reads your stuff. And, you know, by the time I looked at it, I had over three plus years in. Time served is like 60 months, you know, on the books. And, you know, I had, I think it was, I wound up doing like four years and 10 months because I got jammed up when I came home. I think my, I had like four, three or four years supervised release. I couldn't even tell you because they just kept re, they just kept restarting my parole for the first year. That was it. And then I walked away from the life. And Hey, thanks for watching this clip. This clip came from one of my interviews I did in the past. Please hit subscribe if you want to get more clips like this. Also, if you want to watch the full interview, I'll put a link in the description. Or you can hit the button on the screen to watch the full interview.